Good morning, Chapel Hill. It's time uh, for our devotional again. I hope you're doing well. I hope that you're staying safe and your families are safe. Um, our prayer is that soon we will be back together again. And again, I, I, I said yesterday we will be giving you some information about <clears throat> when we will begin to uh, see each other again in worship services. Um, we know that it won't be before the 24th of this month, um, but uh, we will soon know for more details not only when we'll do it, but how that will look and what, uh, what, uh, what you can expect if you, when you come to church and how we will prepare ourselves for that. But for this morning, before we get back into the book of Colossians, uh, let's have a word of prayer. Father, I thank you for those watching uh, this video, and I thank you that your grace is with us even now as we speak. I pray for your healing touch on those of us in this congregation who desperately are longing for your healing. We've heard some reports of people who are in pain. We've seen it in our prayer lists, and many names have come up. Father, we ask your grace to be upon our brothers and sisters as they look to you for grace, that you would minister to us and that we would receive a blessing from, from coming to you in our time of need. I pray for all of us, not only in this congregation, but also in this city, that your Holy Spirit would have his way with us, that you would minister to us and draw us closer to Jesus, your Son, Father. We ask you for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So <clears throat> we're looking in the book of Colossians and, and uh, we uh, looked at verse uh, chapter 1, verse 21 yesterday and, and talked about the dilemma that we find ourselves in as human beings that, that we tend to, uh, the verse says, once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior. So we have this dilemma, this cyclical thing, this vicious cycle of we sin and that alienates us from God, which uh, causes us to, to sin more, which causes us to be even more alienated from God and further and further and further away from God. And so this is kind of the dilemma in which we find ourselves. And um, the, the next verse, though, verse 22, Paul um, gives us the answer to this, this issue. We talked yesterday about the answer is not found in philosophy or mysticism or religious laws and legalism. Um, but Paul says uh, in the next verse, he says, he's in verse 21, he says, you're alienated from God because of your wicked behavior. And then in verse 22, he says, here's the answer. And it says, uh, it says, but now God has reconciled us by Christ's physical body through death to present us holy in his sight, without blemish and free from accusation. And so God's answer to this alienation is uh, reconciliation. Um, if you look in the book of John, I wanted to kind of go to a story uh, from the Gospel of John. He tells this story that really reflects this dilemma that we're talking about in Colossians chapter 1. Um, uh, John chapter 5 verses 2 to 7 uh, tells this story of this man uh, who is sitting down uh, in this uh, place that this is now there is in Jerusalem near the sheep gate a pool which in Aramaic is called Bethesda and which is surrounded by five, five colored uh, covered uh, colonnades um, it's basically these these um, these tented areas these five tented areas that are uh, surrounding this this pool and John says there's here a great number of disabled people used to lie, the blind and the lame and the paralyzed. And then it zones, John zones into this one person. It's one who was there who had been an invalid for 38 years. Uh, when Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, Jesus asked this man, he says, do you want to get well? Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. While I'm trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. So <clears throat> here is this picture of this dilemma, this, this vicious cycle this man is in. Uh, is, is apparently the, the man's problem is 38 years old. He has suffered from this malady for 38 years old that leaves him unable to, to walk. And um, he also believes, this man believes that at this pool, at Bethesda, he believes that uh, if he can somehow get into the water, uh, apparently the, every once in a while the waters would be stirred in this pool, and the first one in the water, when the waters were stirred, uh, would be healed. Um, some 
uh, translations tell us that there was an angel that would come down and stir the waters and the first person who was who was um, sick around that pool that would get in the pool, the blind, the lame, the, 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 the deaf, uh, the first person in the pool would, would be healed. It was kind of like musical chairs. First one to sit down gets the chair. And so that's kind of what they're doing around this pool. And um, this man says, he, 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 Jesus comes to us says, do you want to be healed? And he says, this is my dilemma. Uh, I can't walk. And uh, when the water is stirred, that will heal me and make me able to walk. I try to get there, but before I can get there, someone else gets to it and is, is healed ahead of me. So his dilemma goes like this. He can't walk until he gets healed. And he can't get healed until he can, can walk. You see that he's in this vicious cycle of, I just can't get out of this, this cycle. Um, and he sums up his problem to Jesus in verse 7. He says, I have no one to help me. That's really the man's issue. There's no one to help him. He needs help. He can't do it. He can't find the answer within himself. This, this dilemma is just overwhelming and crushing in his life. But he can't find the, the answer. So he says, I, I need somebody to help me. So in verse 8, Jesus breaks this vicious cycle uh, for this man. He says to him, get up, pick up your mat, and walk. And at once, the Bible says, he picked up his mat and, and walked. And uh, so, so you see, we, in this verse, and this goes back to Colossians, this dilemma that we are in, we, we, our situation, our lives, resemble this man's dilemma. We can't stop sinning until we're reconciled to God. And we can't be reconciled to God until we stop sinning. Um, we're like this this man. We're, we're people who are trying to get into the water, but we just can't. We just can't do it. We have this dilemma. So Jesus reaches into the teeth of our dilemma and he pulls us out. And he says he says that he will be the one to uh, break this cycle in which we find ourselves. And that's called grace. That's called grace. Um, there's another way of, of kind of illustrating this this uh, principle, and that's uh, in John's Gospel. Jesus says two things that, uh, once again, reveal to us the, the cycle, the, the vicious cycle that we're in. In John chapter 6, verse 44, he says, Jesus says this, No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. And so that's, that's the principle that Jesus says, you're, you're, No one is going to come to Jesus unless the Father draws that person. And then he says another place, he says, No one can come to the Father except through me. So here's the dilemma that in those two verses, that's John, that's John 14, 6. So John 6, 44 and John 14, 6, these two verses reflect a universal dilemma that all humanity is bound in. And that is, I can't get to Jesus unless the Father draws me to Jesus. And I can't get to the Father unless Jesus brings me to the Father. And so there is, it's the Bible's way those two verses are the Bible's way of saying to us, you can't get there from here. That's your dilemma. You're, you're in this cycle that just you just can't break out of. Um, we can't get to God. We can't get to heaven. So God, in his grace, breaks the cycle. He, he, he reaches into the teeth of this dilemma, like the man at the pool of Bethesda. He reaches into our dilemma, and he pulls us out. We can't get to heaven, so God sends heaven to us. It's called the incarnation. We could never reach God, but God in his mercy and in his grace reaches to us. The Bible says, once we were alienated from God and were enemies in our minds because of our evil behavior, we were in that cycle. But now, Paul says, God has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation. That's Colossians 1, 21 to 22. Let's bow our heads. Father, thank you for your love for us, and thank you for reaching into the teeth of our dilemma and pulling us out. We could not get to you. We were in, a, in, a, in this vicious cycle that kept us further and further and further away from you. And you, in your mercy and your love for us, reached into our dilemma and pulled us near to your side. I pray that you would help us to meditate on these things as we go through our day and help us to be thankful for the grace that we find in Jesus. We ask for this in his name. Amen. Well, God bless you, Chapel Hill. We'll see you uh, soon.